Alright guys, welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be a quick 8.3 assassination row guide. And, uh, you know, let's get straight into it. I don't want this to be a 20 minute guide like the previous one. A lot of you guys know a lot of this stuff at this point. I just want to run over what I've been using. And if you want a more detailed description of a certain thing, let me know. And uh, I'll consider making another video. If you guys like the comment, then... I'll put out another video on this stuff, but let's hop into it. We're going to give you guys talents, honor talents, stat priorities, corruptions, Azerite traits. You know, even though there's a bunch of RNG in this game and you can't really control what you get, but you're going to do your best anyway. Let's hop into it. So first up, we got talents. These are the talents. This is my default setup. I run like every single game. We got Master Poisoner. Um, what Master Poisoner is going to do is give you increased wound poison effect. It's going to make that healing reduction a 30% instead of a 25%. And it's going to make your crippling a 60% slow up from 50. I use elaborate planning when I'm sure the target's going to get no healing whatsoever. Um, maybe mostly in like world content and stuff like that. For the most part, it's better to stick Master Poisoner. It couples well with Mind Numbing Poison. Um, there's an alternate build I'll show in a second too that I, where I use elaborate planning. Um, next row, Sutterfuge. Only a real option here. It allows you to get more openers from stealth. Um, it's just the most powerful here in PvP. Um, next row, Mark for Death. Mark for Death is the best option here. A lot of new rogues might go towards uh, Vigor. And the reason why is, you know, you have more energy. It makes rotation smoother. Uh, but Mark for Death is overall better. It gives you a better uh, combo point to energy ratio. Especially in a PvP situation where you're constantly um, going in and out of combat. You're not really getting full effect from Vigor anyway, and Mark for Death's getting its full effect. Allows you to do stuff like come from stealth with a full kidney shot, um, which is a very, very powerful opener in the last two expansions of the game. Uh, might seem a little bit weird because Cheap Shot is meant to be your opener stun, uh, but the damage simply isn't as efficient. Um, that's pretty much all there is to say with that. And next row here, we got Elusiveness. Makes your Faint, which is a 15 second cooldown you have as a rogue, which normally just reduces AoE uh, damage. It makes it a full 30% damage reduction for 5 seconds. And with this 15 second cooldown, this is a very, very, very powerful option. Um, a lot of new rogues might go for cheat death once again. I see that a lot at lower ratings. Um, it's not really that good. It's kind of cheesy. If, you've having, if you're having trouble dying to like Mage Rogue, you might toss this on. But it's pretty inconsistent and it's usually not going to work out for you. Just go with elusiveness like every single time. Um, next row here, Eternal Bleeding is the only real option in PvP. Um, Prey on the Weak is nerfed to 5%, otherwise I would consider this because the 10% would be quite fun for setting up teammates who usually tend to add a lot more damage to um, kill setups than the Rogue does. Um, just because you're spending globals on control abilities usually and it, it does lower your damage a little bit. But Internal Bleeding is great because it works with your Venomous Wounds passive, which is a passive assassination Rogues have um, where you get 7 energy every time uh, your bleeds tick. So just pressing your kidney shot, you're pretty much getting all that energy back. It makes your rotation a lot smoother. Makes it easier to burst. Next row, we got Toxic Blade. Uh, it's the only real pick here. You can kind of troll around with like Sanguinate, but uh, it's only good if you have like really, really specific setups. And I haven't put a lot of work into this. It's pretty much Toxic Blade and forget about it. In PvP, it is only 20%, but it does make your Envenoms hit harder. Makes your Poisons hit harder. Um, you're going to be doing more dam, and uh, it's always a good thing. I guess it also makes your uh, Poison Bomb do more damage too. Um, last row, Poison Bomb. Every time you use Venom and Rupture, you got a 4% chance to smash a Vial on the ground, which sounds really damn cool. I love it. Uh, and does some damage. And that's the best option here. Honor Talents, moving into that. Pretty much every game, uh, if you're human, a lot of the time you can play Relentless. Other than that, if you're any other race, you want to take your Gladiator's Medallion because it is going to give you that on-demand way to get out of crowd control, whether it be a Kitty Shot and a Smoke Bomb from an enemy rogue or uh, Trinketing a Blind from an enemy rogue. Uh, a lot of rogue examples, but it's going to do that. Um, Smoke Bomb, System Shock, and Mind Numbing Poison. I use these a lot, especially with Master Poisoner. If you don't need Mind Numbing Poison because you're going to be hitting a DPS, although a lot of DPS do use uh, things that count as spells, so you do, uh, do get some damage from that. Um, you can use Maneuverability instead. This thing's absolutely insane. It's good against stuff like DKs. Um, I don't mind it once in a while against like a Rusted Druid if I'm going to be rushing them down to get out of their Vortex really, really fast can like sprint and proc the vortex and then you know maybe step them if they leaped away from you. Um, Death from above also does really good for countering that same situation and that is the third thing I would swap between out of all the honor talents. There's not too many other useful things. Um, I've messed around with creeping venom. It, it hasn't been good since the first season of the expansion. Uh, 
and Shiv is uh, a lot of you guys might want to try like deadly poison or something using Shiv to put on wound. It's it's not really good either. Um, if Shiv was free energy cost, this would potentially be a playstyle. But um, having the the ability to fan of knives out your wound poisons can be really powerful if you're playing like a kind of a rot comp too. Um, so that's another reason why we don't really do that. Um, last thing to say about this, death from above. I like to use this sometimes with. Um, I, I pretty much take Master Poisoner all the time now. Uh, before when I climbed, I have climbed with Elaborate Planning. Um, but the more powerful slow is usually pretty good because since you're not the only source of damage in an arena game, that, that's kind of the time when I'd use Elaborate Planning. If you're the only source of damage going to the target, like maybe a 1v1, I think Elaborate Planning is really good. But having this uh, better slow allows you to pillar and line of sight the enemy better when you're trying to wait for cooldowns. Um, and, and it's a lot, I don't know, it's very, very good. Pretty much just play Master Poison and forget about it, but there is some situations where elaborate planning can be good, and a lot of people just AFK on Master Poisoner. Works out fine for them, uh, but I like having the higher burst option. But Death from Above, really, really good for avoiding stuff like Death Coils. It does require uh, a little bit of game knowledge, and more frequently I have been running into that bug, which I really wish Blizzard would fix, where if you hit uh, Death from Above, and you plan to say Vanish Garot when you're coming out of your Death from Above, um, and you hit it too soon, it will sometimes bug your Vanish, and you won't be able to press your Vanish for the next like little bit of the game, and I've actually lost a few games because of that. Um, anyway, moving on from the Honor Talents thing, this video is running on, or running on a little bit longer than I expected. We got the gear. Um, the traits you want to aim for, you want three Twist the Knives on your gear. Increases your Envenom's damage by quite a bit. Traits are nerfed by half in PvP, and the defensive ones are nerfed to 20% effectiveness. Um, but usually secondary effects like this become really powerful because of that, because they still have spelled uh, bleeds. But you want three twist the knife, and you want one shrouded suffocation. The reason you want the shrouded suffocation trait is it's going to give you three combo points. If you stack multiple of these, the combo points will not stack, but it will give you a three combo point opener, which is pretty damn powerful. You can, uh, if you're riding down something that's not going to get away, you can go for like a garrote, mutilate, rupture, mark for death kidney, um, press out your essences, whatever else. And other than that, the stat priority, guys, you want to go for haste and versatility. Versatility is very, very powerful um, with the introduction of, like, all these essences, which we're going to go into in a second here, too. It just scales really well. It makes your stuff like your Breath of the Dying, your essence, it hits really hard. Um, I think that on some of my other rogues, Reaping Flame says it does, like, 57,000. And on this rogue in the bottom right, you can see it does 64,000. Um, very, very good. And for corruptions too, I don't have any good corruptions, but the best ones you want to use, if you have a tentacle, um, I can't remember what the tentacle is even called, this rogue doesn't even have a tentacle, guys. You want to use the tentacle, it hurts people, but in PvP, tentacles and divine or, uh, infinite stars, both very powerful, they have a 14 second internal cooldown now, so they can't spam proc on people anymore. Um, my number one corruption though, better than that, is if you guys have multiple gushing wounds and you can stack gushing wounds, the damage is really insane, and it's very, very consistent. Um, that's the kind of thing I like. I don't really like random procs that are not up all the time because it makes it like really unpredictable, and it's really hard to play around stuff like that. Um, so Gushing Wounds wins the number one spot, but I mean, with the RNG gear system, surely you guys don't have multiple corruptions, right? If you do, let me know in the comments below because I have gotten shit with this change. It's unbelievable. My Usually I use this uh, Echoing Void, and it works in really, really good in situations where there is multiple targets stacked on top of each other. But other than that, it kind of sucks. But it's what I'm stuck with. It's what I usually queue with in PvP. Um, I do have two of these haste procs, which I've been messing around with. But they're, they're not great either. Um, at least for PvP. Last thing here, guys. Essences. We got Breath the Dying and the Major. Um, this thing's fire. Whenever you drop this on somebody above 80% or below 20%. Um, it's going to give you a crazy cooldown reduction. If it kills them, like a pet or something like that, you get a 100% damage increase on your next one, and it just does absolutely insane damage. Um, for miners, I use Memory of Lucid Dreams, rank 3. Even if you only have rank 1, guys, this essence is still worth using. But whenever it procs for me, you get 400 versatility for 8 seconds, which is really nice. We got Conflict and Strife for a little bit more versatility. And we got Vision and Perfection for even more versatility. And it lowers the cooldown of your Vendetta. It makes your Vendetta a one and a half minute cooldown. If you're playing with something like a Paladin like I do, 
Um, Paladin's cooldown on wings with Vision of Perfection Minor is also a minute and a half, so it kind of syncs your stuff up. You don't always want to necessarily do that together. Um, but in the situations where that's kind of how you're going, if you're trying to play a momentum style of game, it can be really, really powerful to have Vendetta and wings at the same time. Um, an honorable mention, other than running Vision of Perfection, if you decide you don't need that low cooldown on Vendetta, is having uh, Rank 3 Condensed Life Force Essence as Subtlety. I'm probably going to use this once I finish maxing it out, and I will talk about that in the sub guide. Um, but that's pretty much all for that, guys. Um, we are going to... Oh yeah, Trinkets, before we go. Writhing Segment of Drestigath from the raid from Drestigath is a very, very good Trinket. Um, the downside of this Trinket is if there's more than one target, it's going to spread the damage, and you don't want that. Um, also, Remote Guidance Device. I have a low item level one. I don't even use it all the time, but these are the two most powerful trinkets this patch, guys. And I do swap between a couple others. If you don't have these and you're stuck with other options, um, I have I have played with the badge a little bit still. It is decent, but it seems a little. It's kind of fallen off at the moment with all these other powerful trinkets sitting around. Um, I can't wait to go back to a playstyle where I get to use uh, the badge and the on use or the proc trinket. I just love these two trinkets. They're a lot of fun to play with. I feel like I know how to play my class the best when I'm using them. Um, and yeah, so I'll use, I'll swap between like Maledict and the proc trinket. I like to do that a lot against left like Wrestle Druids. Um, my teammate is running Obsidian Claw in Maledict, so it gives us a lot of ways to abuse the enemy team's dispel to make Maledict stick for its full duration, um, which makes it very powerful. Those, the times when you can get Maledict to stick to the target, it is still very good. Um, and then another thing too, mostly for threes, if you're playing RMP or RM Paladin, um, and you guys got the Spite Trinket. If all three of your teammates are wearing it, it can be pretty powerful. You just want to start off the game with a sap, multiple saps on the target. And the Rogue can actually use the Spite Trinket on the target from stealth. And you just let it ramp up and it builds corruption. And, you know, maybe Grand Delusions will spawn and come kill the guy. Um, and then, you know, once in a while, if I'm against, like, Mage Rogue or something, I might swap on Safeguard and Twos. But other than that, that's all. Just default, the best trinkets, guys, are Dressed to Gath and the Bike. Um, if you don't have them, consider using some of the regular PvP trinkets. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. Hopefully this video was informational for you guys and you enjoyed it. Please let me know in the comments below what you think. And if you're excited for the subtlety video, please let me know. Because I'm going to try to probably start playing subtlety a little bit more. I've been spending a lot of time on my paladin alts lately. Uh, I'm just trying to heal some low threes and stuff like that, having fun. But I kind of want to play some subtlety, so we're probably going to get that done soon. And yeah, we'll see you again soon, guys. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.